Hey, welcome back to the Lee Channel. So we are part two of our position time graphs. In part two of this video, we're going to look at non-uniform motion. In other words, looking at accelerated motion, where velocity is changing over time, whether that's in direction and magnitude or either one. So when you do have a change in the velocity in terms of its magnitude on the slope, on the position time graph, the slope will also be changing. And if the slope of that line of, on the position time graph is changing, you will not get a straight line, but instead you will get a curved line. And this is some characteristic that you've seen hopefully in your FET simulations already. Now, the four different kinds of curves we'll be looking at qualitatively first before jumping into the quantitative side are these four curves. So you have this one, you have this one, you have this one over here that curves down, and then that kind of curves a little bit like a U shape going down. Here we have a chance for you to try these uh, four different examples we have here, an object moving forward and speeding up, I have to move forward and slowing down, moving backwards and speeding up, and moving backwards and slowing down. So for each of these four examples, I'd like you to match the corresponding curve based on the descriptor. And one thing to keep in mind, let's just say that uh, going forward means the positive direction, okay? All right, good time to pause. All right, so let's go over this together. The first one, your object is moving forward, meaning the object already has uh, a positive velocity to begin with. So remember, the velocity on a position time graph is the slope, meaning we're going to have a positive slope to begin with. It doesn't really matter where you start your graph in terms of the position, not because I didn't specify it. So you can start up here, 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 down here, or whatever it is that you wish. For just, um, just to spice things up again to a bit, I'm going to start down here. So we start with some sort of a positive velocity, just like that, and we're going to be moving, or going to be speeding up, meaning that our speed is increasing. If we have an increasing speed, that means our slope will also be increasing. So it's going to be steeper than before. So this line, as it's, it's moving forward, as I'm drawing this line, I'm going to draw a line that's going to get, the slope is going to get steeper like this, okay? It's like you're climbing up the mountain and the mountain's getting harder, okay? So it's like this, woo! So that's the curve. Next one, we have an object moving forward but slowing down. So same thing, we have a positive velocity to begin with. I'm going to I'm going to draw start that at the origin. It really doesn't matter. This time, the velocity or the speed is decreasing, slowing down. So that means our slope is also going decreasing as well, meaning it's not getting steeper. It's getting flatter as we're drawing the line. So we're going to draw this line, do, 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 and it's going to get flattened out like this, okay? Potentially becoming zero as the velocity decreases, the speed decreases to zero. Next one is uh, moving backwards and speeding up. Now this time, we are going in the negative direction, meaning we have a negative velocity to start with. And again, doesn't matter we start off, let's just say we start up here, okay? So we're starting up here, we start off with a negative slope, but this time the object is going back and speeding up. So not the velocity, I'm talking about the speed, Speed is increasing, and whenever your speed is increasing, your slope is also increasing, irregardless of the direction. So sorry, when I say the slope is increasing, I'm talking about the magnitude of the slope. When I talk about the magnitude, I'm going to use these little two bars beside, uh, on each side of the, um, the, the, the symbol. And that just means uh, like absolute signs. And that just means the magnitude and not caring about the direction. Obviously, the slope is going to be more negative, but I'm just going to say that the slope is, the size of the slope is going to be larger. It's going to get steeper 
going down, okay? So that's steeper going down like that, okay? All right, so next up we have moving backwards and slowing down. This is again a negative velocity. I'm going to say step down here. And this time we're slowing down. Our speed is decreasing. The magnitude of our slope is also decreasing, meaning is becoming flatter as we go. Okay? So slope is going to be flatter, do, 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 and it's going to taper off where our velocity might reach zero. Our speed will reach zero. Okay? So when we talk about the um, we talk about the slope, we often re talk, refer to the magnitude of the speed as it's decreasing or increasing, irregardless of the direction. The slope becomes steeper or flatter in that sense. So now we have a qualitative kind of a background. Let's move over and talk about the quantitative side of things. So here we uh, for a position time graph, you might be asking, well, how do we find the acceleration on a position time graph? We don't necessarily do that on a position time graph. It's not uh, very easy until maybe you get into um, a, the calculus or something, which is not part of the course because we're dealing with this curve, okay? But um, what we would do, we would convert a position time graph to a velocity time graph, which we'll talk about in the next lesson, not part of this video, and use that graph to find acceleration. So we can't really do that on a position time graph at our stage. But what we can do is we can look at the velocity at certain points along this graph. And when we try to find the velocity of the one particular point in the motion, we are finding something called the instantaneous velocity, velocity at that point in time. So how do we find the velocity of that point in time? There is no straight line to find the slope. So how do we find a straight line? How do we draw a straight line? Or in what straight line? What, 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 where's a straight line? There's no straight line on this curve. That's what we're going to go over right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pick a point. I'm going to pick this point. It looks like a nice little curve right there. And I'm going to draw a line. This line is tangent to that point on the graph. So what is this tangent line? And what does it mean? The tangent line, by definition, it's only supposed to intersect this curve only at that point. So it kind of looks like this. So it kind of looks like that, okay? And I'm just going to move it closer. So that's my tangent line. It's uh, It only touches that point on the graph. On the other hand, if I drawn a sloppier line, if I drawn this line, for example, then you will notice that this line touches this point on the graph, but it touches also this point, this point, this point, this point, and all the points in between, and um, for that matter. So when you draw a, a nice tangent line, it should only touch one point on the graph. So if I had, if I could zoom in to this curve, and I kept zooming in and zooming in, I would see this line touching exactly this one point on that line perfectly and no other point. Now you might say, oh, it's not really perfect. I know, eh? we've done the best that we could. And that's all you can do when you're doing your own problems as well. You try to draw the best tangent line as possible. A more mathematical approach, not something I expect you to know, is imagine this point on this curve is part of a circle. Okay, imagine I have a circle right there, a terrible looking circle, but um, what happens if I take that line and I, and I extend it to, say, the center of that circle? What happens is that tangent line should make a 90 degree angle with that line that extends to the center of that circle, that radial line, okay? So that's another way you can interpret the um, tangent line. So I'm going to erase that because I need that space to help us do the next part. So now we have a tangent line. What we 
now what we can do is we can use that line to calculate our slope okay so our slope by again means our velocity and in this case we're calculating the instantaneous velocity of that curve is your displacement over time but also recall that the slope is your rise over run so what we would do here is we would use this line and if you can extend this line as far as you can the better because what we're going to do again is we're going to pick two points on this line draw a right triangle and just like we did in the last video use this right triangle to find the rise and the run according to our x and y axes don't forget to read your graph properly and use that to find our instantaneous velocity there okay so that's what we would do so let's do an actual example so here we have the same graph that I got from the last uh, from the last video, but what I just did is I just extended that line below to look like it's got a nice curve to it. So the question we're going to do is find the instantaneous velocity at 8.5 seconds. So that's right there, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that point on the graph. I should use a different pen is to find this point right there and I'm going to draw a tangent line to that point as best as I can. It's not very easy but we will try. Okay so that's the best job that I could have done and uh, I'm gonna draw two points. Actually I'm gonna extend my line. Now I have an extended line to pick two points on this graph and to find the instantaneous velocity. I'm going to pick this point here and I'm going to pick this point that is over here. You might say, oh, there's an easier point along here, but uh, it's good to pick points that are far away as possible. Let's draw a right triangle and then let's calculate the slope, which is our rise over our run. Our rise a little bit tricky to find the um, the difference between these two parts of the graph. So we have negative four, and um, we can count by ones because it is going up by one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's not exactly ten, but roughly nine point seven. Roughly nine point seven. I'm going to estimate that. So our rise is nine point seven. Don't forget units. This is um. Uh, our y-axis is in meters. Okay. Now the other thing that you need to be careful when you're doing this is that notice that the, as we're going from this point of the line to this point of the line, notice that the slope is descending. You have a slope that's curving downwards. So the slope here is negative. So that's something to be careful of. Uh, next, so that's the rise. Keep in mind a negative slope. We have a negative value the rise is negative. As for the run, let's start from here. We start off at five, going to six, we have one second, two, three, four seconds. Okay, total of four seconds. Now, my um, I, I might have estimated a few of the points. It's not gonna be perfect. So whenever you do a problem and you're wondering, did I get the right value? Am I gonna get the right answer on the, on the answer key? Okay, don't worry. I'm, we're usually going to accept a range of answers. So you don't, uh, not everyone's perfect and not everyone's the same. So be, uh, it's just, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so let's calculate that over here. We have 9.7 divided by 4. We have 2.425. I just used a, I just used a makeshift calculator just to quickly get this done. Okay, so rounding up to uh, probably to this decimal place here, considering the precision of our graph lines. And, um, this gives us our negative value because we have a negative slope. So 2.45 is our instantaneous velocity at 8.5 seconds. Okay. Now we kind of have a ch we kind of had a chance to uh, look at how to do that. Maybe this is a good time for you to try this on your own. So given this graph, position time graph. Our job is to find the instantaneous velocity at 
the four second mark right there. So it looks kind of curved, but almost flattening out. And I'm going to give a chance for you to try this and I will go over the solutions after. Good time to pause. Okay, now it's my turn. Let's find this tangent line. So taking the point at the four second mark and drawing a line tangent to that, making sure it only touches the graph at that one point, extending the line so we can pick two points as far away as possible, drawing a right triangle and finding the slope of that line. Rise over run. The, the rise is from the going to the top about 9.8. Don't forget the intervals is 2 and not 1 going on the y axis. And then the bottom is 7 seconds because we counted the 1 second mark to the 8. The difference is 7 seconds, giving us our total there. Alright, so it took a while to find that line that's nice and tangent. And uh, so our final answer here we have is 1.4 meters per second positive for a positive instantaneous velocity. And uh, I would, and uh, if you're wondering what range of answers I might accept in this case, probably I would take anywhere as low as maybe even 1 meters per second all the way up to about 2 ish, somewhere between 1 and 2 meters per second. It's a big, generous range, and that's what you would expect, say, on an IB exam as well. Um, they're relatively generous, but you, it has to be reasonable, of course, right? Okay, so uh, that is it in terms of the quantitative side of non-uniform graphs. Keep in mind that um, I there are chances where I might even ask for the um, instantaneous velocity, even when the velocity is constant. So for example, in, down here when the line is straight, or here when the line is uh, flat over here, when the velocity is constant, I can still ask for the instantaneous velocity, say at 6 seconds. And it would just be, a, what, 0, and it would be zero instantaneous velocity would be 0 throughout all this point over here. So keep in mind that even if the um, even if the velocity is constant, I still can ask for the instantaneous velocity at those points as well. So, um, but that would just be easy. You just find the slope of the line, and that's it. You don't even have to draw the tangent anymore. Okay. So something to keep in mind. All right. So that concludes our part two of this video, and a quick recap what we did. We looked at the quant, uh, qualitative side of the acceleration, just to do a quick recap. Then we talked about the um, instantaneous velocity by finding the uh, line that's tangent to a point on the graph and using the slope of that graph to find the instantaneous velocity. Okay, so hopefully you learned something from this video. That concludes the uh, position time graph set part two of the video. Good luck on your examples. Fat Mama Physics signing out.